Oops, wrong session. There we go. Welcome. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 22nd of April in Asia, uh, the time zone we center this one on. So thanks for all for being here. And topics I've got, news, Jenkins changelog for the upcoming LTS, SheCode Africa Contributhon. Those were the, the most pressing ones for me. I don't think we've got anything to report on last week's topic, where do we place upgrade instructions? We had a decision from it. And I don't know that Sahitya's, I haven't seen anything from Sahitya proposing a, a change, but there are many, well, we'll talk about it when we get there. So current status is worth discussion. Any other topics? Go ahead. A quick update on GSOC. Oh yes, Google Summer Apropos of Code. Of nothing, I'm just curious and. Yeah, that's that's a very good one. Google Summer of Code status. <laughs> Let's do that as well. Any other topics that are hot on the list? Quick look through. I would propose we not touch on Open PRs today, just because I'm not ready. Oh, oh, I take it back. There is one more. It is a governance board decision on the uh, logo change for www.jenkins.io. Okay. Uh, raise, raise our voice against the war. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'll, I'll look at, I'll show that one briefly as well. Any other topics? Okay, then let's go ahead. So one item of news that I think is really, really interesting is I find it fascinating. Alex, Alex Brandis, uh, known in the Jenkins commits as Jenkins user, not my fault. <laughs> yes, don't you? Uh, university student, I'd never choose a name like that, but good for him. That's great. Uh -huh. um, has led us through a, a series of steps to enable crowd in enterprise, which is a translation support web user interface to help us get more translations and easier, more easily collect translations of the Jenkins UI. So I'm gonna open it just so you can get a hint for how it feels. It's really, it's quite amazing. So here's the schedule build plugin. And there are in the translation files here available and I can, by clicking one thing, I can enter into a translate mode. It offers me machine generated translations where I say, oh yes, this is a good, good choice for the Italian translation of time zone. I've now contributed. Someone else comes in and does the proofreading to say yes. And then after contribution and proofread, Crowdin will automatically submit a pull request in the correct format to our repositories. Oh, wow. That's really cool. It is, it is wildly cool. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so, <is>. Wow. <laughs> I mean, translating, translating before was the it, current translating techniques is this horrible experience of editing Java property files and, right. and trying to get the, the, the character set correct and trying to do mm -hmm. all sorts of exotic things. And this just makes it magically easy. So the, it's been demonstrated in the docs office hours Europe time. We will schedule a Jenkins online meetup to show this to other people to highlight to them just how easy it is to do. And we'll, we'll begin steadily adding more and more projects to these, to these things that can be translated. So it's right now, I admit it, I'm using very simple ones, right? We're using the design library that Alex had created with Tim Jacom and that you can see on weekly.ci.jenkins.io. This is the design library is a, is a new way of showing people examples of how to interact with the Jenkins UI and how to write Jenkins UIs with the new Jenkins UI facilities. And so it, it shows all these things. The cool thing about that story is it's also translated <laughs> and it's been translated with crowd in. So in this case, 
Alex Brandis has started the German translation and we'll, we'll go forward and make more translations as we go. So really, really quite an elegant setup that's happening here in getting more languages supported in Jenkins for native language users. Yeah. Uh, we will eventually enable it for Jenkins Core. It's, it's very usable with Jenkins Core. It's just, we're not sure we're ready with all the processes to make it successful with Jenkins Core. We know how well it works with Jenkins plugins. Uh-huh, yeah. So any questions there? Uh, special thanks to CrowdIn for their enterprise license. Uh, it's, it's how they do things for open source. We're very grateful. They've been this amazingly supportive bunch, just wonderful how the, for how much they've helped us. Huh. All right, next topic. Jenkins LTS 2.332.3 change log and upgrade guide. The release candidate is built and in test in being tested. Um, Mark to write the change log. Uh, submit the pull request. I'll mention both of you in the pull request to ask for your review, and we'll mention Diraj and several others just to invite reviews so that we we get a good review process. Okay. Any questions there? Okay, next topic then is She Code Africa Contributhon. Here we've got three projects and a project manager. So there are seven women from Africa who are actively participating. The, the first project, inclusive naming. So seeking out and replacing master with controller. slave with agent, et cetera. And the, the cool thing there is these women are paid to being, being paid to do this work. So they're doing the search, they're learning how to use GitHub. I'll actually be presenting a, I'm presenting a tutorial on interacting with Git and GitHub this Saturday. And if you are interested, you're welcome to attend, no requirement. Pipeline Help is the other one. And this is the same project as last year. Then one more was the screenshot update. And this one has been fun because they're running Jenkins Weekly to prepare the screenshots. Since Jenkins Weekly is the most up to date, and we will very soon choose the next LTS baseline. Ooh, ooh, good point. I should note that. Next LTS baseline selection proposed to delay two weeks, two to four weeks. Ah. Uh, we had many regressions, and we're taking active steps to reduce regressions before we choose the baseline. So it feels very promising on SheCode Africa. The, the, we just started, we completed the community bonding period and have started project work. That will continue, project work will continue for four weeks, then a two week shutdown period, then a two week end of project. Right now, I'm a little concerned we're short on a number of mentors, but we've got uh, Kevin Martins, uh, Bruno Verachten, and Angelique that have all connected in the Slack channel. And if you're willing to do asynchronous, you could certainly connect to the Slack channel and do it. We'll, we do have meetings weekly and uh, working with them as they make progress. 
any questions there? I just you said you have a project manager. So is one of the sheet code Africa to, to go ahead and do that? Do you they have did. an assistant? How's it working yes, out? Exactly. Nafisa. Nafisa. She's great. Oh my sakes, it's wonderful to have someone who says, Mark, could I do that for you? Oh. It's a great, and that's <clears throat> just the sweetest word you've ever heard. Really? You want to really? just do, she says, would you like me to send the reminders to people about meetings? Oh, yes, that would be wonderful. How about if I do this for you and that? And, and, and she reminds them, hey, be sure you update your project document. So instead of one voice, me harping away, there are two and, and she's doing great. So very, very nice. Yes. Too bad you can't keep her permanently. Well, that's part of the delight of this, right? Is wow, what a treat it is to have somebody helping in that way. Right. Right. All right. Uh -huh. So any any other questions or comments on She Code Africa Contribute on? All right. Next then was um, the LTS baseline selection had been scheduled for yesterday. Uh, it was not selected. Uh, there were there are still quite a number of UI regressions that are open. There's a dashboard available on on issues.jenkins.io that shows what the, the UI regressions are. Uh, six or eight of them were resolved on Tuesday's release. So very, very good progress. We hope to continue making progress over the next week or two and then choose the baseline. That means it will delay all releases throughout through the rest of 2022 by two weeks. We're not going to try to hide this delay anywhere. We're just going to change the release dates is the proposal. Okay. Now that's, and I call that a proposal not yet fully accepted by our release officer. He's in the middle of a move and busy doing things. So we haven't got a final conclusion from him. This is what we hope will happen. But this is the release you said with all these UI changes coming, right? Exactly. The last LTS did many significant and very nice UI changes. This has even more. Yeah, it's, it, I loved it when Olivier Vernon, our former infrastructure officer said, hey, I came back and was using Jenkins and it's quite different, very nice. Mm -hmm. So it, it's fun to have people, oh, that's cool, nice UI. So it's improving. Any other questions on LTS baseline? Okay, next topic then, Google Summer of Code. Thanks to Kristen. Uh, she's got one of the one of the project proposals that came in for the, the pipeline steps doc generator. And we've got review, it's we're in the review period now. Mm -hmm. uh, potential mentors, review and comment on the proposals. And then the We've got about, I think it's two to three weeks for that. Then the org admins submit our proposed priorities. Mentor lists, I think is part of this. And requests for number of slots um, to Google. Then they go into a period where they choose which projects, Google then chooses the projects that they're willing to fund and the projects start. They announce it and then projects start. So how many proposals do you have or how many good proposals? Are, I good? think are we good? received, I think Alyssa told me 18 in advocacy oh, meeting. Oh, wow. wow. Now that's that's actually apparently Oleg said previous years we've had as many as 40. So wow. it's it's lower than lower than in the past. But given the number of mentors we have, 18 is a very reasonable number, right? right. I, I my personal sense is if we could if we can run three or four projects in the Jenkins project, I will be delighted. I won't be surprised if we only run two. It's we we just don't have the same pool of mentors as we've had in past years. Yeah. And I think I've heard that in general, the number of submissions this year are way down. 
that that seemed to be the noise in the in the org admins mailing list yeah, yeah i've was... seen that too and i was wondering i think someone brought up a really interesting point about how maybe it's because people it you know things have not come back to in person so there's not as much talking about it as the previous year so it's like oh that's yeah it certainly well and and there are certainly we had a very the jenkins project had a very different group actually running google a summer of code to to google it looks like jenkins is a very experienced project but to us internally inside the project we had two brand new people who had never done google summer of code before and one who had some, and and one who had been a previous student so we feel like we're brand new still learning how to do it how to promote it and and we're delighted with the response we've received even if it's less than previous years yeah So just a reminder to Kristen, to me, we've got to do our reviews. <laughs> That's the, yes, yes. <laughs> the, we're in the, this, there's some work to be done and we got to do that, that work. Are you doing anything, anything for Google Summer of Docs or just doing the Summer of Code? Oh, good question. So Google Season of Docs, um, Season of Docs uh, has, their proposal period I think has closed. And we intentionally decided not to do it. Okay, we is is royal. We, me, yeah. I, Mark, wait, decided <laughs> not to do it Can because I just so didn't much. feel like we had the capacity. Yeah. The one time we did it, I felt like it worked out okay. It's just it needed more engagement. And right now my focus is on helping Kevin Martins as he gets ramped up into the Jenkins project and documentation. Yep. <clears throat> and having that next year, you may be able to really do something dynamic. With right, and, and we may have him be able to, to mentor somebody in Google Season of Docs in 12 months, right? I mean, that, right. There's, there's a potential there. We just grow people and let them help so that so that I don't have to. Yeah. All right. Anything else on, on either Summer of Code or Season of Docs? Okay, next topic was upgrade instructions, current status. Let's do a quick check here. I haven't looked, but I don't think I've seen a pull request from Sahitya proposing upgrade instructions. Nope, nothing. And that's no shock because um, the it's surprising the level of complexity hiding in this in this thing. We haven't documented it ever. And I thought, well, that's because it's so simple. And the more I've explored it, the more surprised I've been. Oh, oops, it's complicated in this way. It's complicated in this way. There is a Stack Overflow page, for example, from five or more years ago that describes how to upgrade Jenkins and describes it exactly wrong. <laughs> it's total mess what they describe there. And there are three or four answers, independent answers, each of them being wrong. It's like, oh yes, you install it with this and then you upgrade it this other way and you use, you grant root, per, you, you change the permission on this file that the installation created. It's like, no, no, no. So, so there are many, many mistakes to correct and uh, many ways to make mistakes when doing an upgrade. Huh. And, and it was, I was, I was dismayed. I thought no one would ever install with a Linux package manager and then upgrade manually. That's just, that's sick and wrong. And, and in fact, that's what this thing describes is doing exactly that upgrade manually. It's like, oh my, no. So <laughs> all sorts of interesting hiding in that. Indeed. And, and that doesn't talk about Windows even where it's a, it's a, a whole different thing or, or Mac OS where yet another different thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any questions on upgrade instructions? Okay, the next topic is sort of a hot one. This is, there had been about three or four weeks ago, there had been a proposal come in from, from um, Ksenia Nanashev actually, with a pull request proposing 
this we've got you've got to see it because the I love how the the preview site works that Gavin Mogan has provided for us. So here it is. This is oh, one wow. alternative oh, wow. she proposed. All right, there's one. And now here's the alternate. So when we brought that one to the governance board, uh, one of the board members noted, hey, the Cossack may not be a positive image in to some people who know Ukrainian history. And, and so we put it to a vote and actually invited people to vote between that one and this one. Aha. Okay, so, oops, too big. There we go. So the choices were this one or this one. And this one, the, the Jenkins image with the open eyes and the flag stop the war, won by a slight margin. And it was a relatively slight margin, two or three or four vote difference between them, if you will. Okay. So not a huge one, but the governance board um, approved on Wednesday that this is the one we're going to use. And okay. special thanks to Ksenia. So the colors in the background right. behind are colors of the Ukrainian flag. Right. And we continue with this message on the site that encourages people to donate to the International Committee of the Red Cross and other donations mm -hmm. to support the people of Ukraine. Right. And, and, and both of these are, are just marvelous work. Remind us just how good Ksenia is at what she does. That, yes, that's she's, really, yes. what a treat. Very talented, yes. I, I wish I could do things like that. That's just amazing. Right, agreed. Why don't we do more though? We've got the female Jenkins now. We just had that. We don't modify that one for anything. Oh, uh, certainly spin-offs, spin-offs of that could be done as well. I think you're referring to this one, Meg. So th this one came from um let's see, who was it that it was a group in France that it's provided the, it? That you know, it's like the yeah. um, women's jet like Java. Yeah, that I should be able to find the name here. Just a minute. Where is she? Come on, in the artwork. Paris? Why don't I see it? Okay, clearly my my ability to resolve images is really there, sad. Oh, there it is, there it is. Stop, 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 stop. Oh, Duchess. Oh, yes, yeah, Duchess. 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 And it was Duchess <laughs> I know, like, right. Yeah, exactly. That it's was... like we're all like <laughs> oh, <laughs> trying no, to see that. it as quickly as possible. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. And... And I, I agree, but but for me that one I like it just exactly as it is. I think that one is is just delightful. I yeah. agree. So and thanks to Duchess France France for their work as a group on that. Yes. They they were actually a, a great con con contributor team to the French localization during last Hacktoberfest. I look forward to even better involvement with Crowdin because it's much easier to do translation they did it they did it the really hard way and now we we're going to have a much better way in time for Hacktoberfest 2022 oh yay okay yeah and and really translations are a great way to contribute truthfully it's it's marvelous to read jenkins in your in your native language instead of having to do it all in english right all right any other topics before we close for today? Nope. I'm good. Not for me. Okay. Well, thanks to both of you. Thank you. Oh.